welcome to this very special edition of Indian Standard Time, a show that speaks to global leaders and thinkers, to people who have made their mark on the sands of time. Today we bring you this very special edition from Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, where I am in conversation with Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, whose blood, sweat and tears have mingled with the soil of this countryside for decades, who has been a close friend and confidant of the former legendary anti-Taliban commander Ahmed Shah Massoud and who is today a formidable candidate in Afghanistan's presidential and very highly contested election. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. Thank you. I'd like to start by asking you, am I speaking to the next president of Afghanistan? Most probably. That's nice. I'm, uh, it's, it's great that you're so confident. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the confidence is not based on any illusion. It's based on uh, what we see in the country and what I have witnessed mm -hmm. and uh, what our team has done okay so uh, what what during is it? campaign during earlier than that so what is it that you've witnessed you've had you've had some good rallies i I believe in uh, Kandahar and across the countryside uh, across the country across the country and there will be a couple of more rallies mm -hmm. in the remaining three days okay uh, and uh, apart from that uh, I've been in the opposition in the past six years. There is a background of uh, over 30% of votes from the earlier elections, and mm -hmm. then we continued uh, to connect, to interact okay. with the people, and to uh, uh, to network throughout the country, uh, and raise the voices of the people in the past five years. Okay, and uh, now it is uh, uh, giving fruits. So two, I have two questions related to the presidential uh, election itself, Dr. Abdullah. The first is that five years ago when you fought the presidential election, you withdrew after the first round. Yes. Why was that? Uh, the, uh, the, the elections was massively fraudulent. There was no doubt about it. All right. First round. Okay. And then we had some conditions for the second round. Mm -hmm. And I had reduced those conditions into one condition. Mm -hmm. In talking to President Karzai, I had a one on one with President Karzai post uh, elections. Uh, and that has been that uh, the head of the Independent Election Commission had to be removed. And one commissioner of his choice out of the list of the commissioners because of should the have been appointed. Because of the fraud, or what because you thought fraud. was a fraudulent election? Uh, no, it was ev everybody, everybody witnessed a fraudulent election, there All was right. no doubt about it. Okay. So uh, we had to many conditions for the uh, for betterment of the environment as well as uh, um, uh, transparency of the elections. Mm -hmm. But then I, I thought that let's make it simple okay. so that people understand that there was fraud which was revealed, documented, mm -hmm. uh, and, and exposed. Uh, at the same time, there is a correction. There is the minimum correction. And even with that minimum condition, President Karzai didn't agree. And then I didn't boycott the elections, because the uh, Taliban had boycotted the elections. Right. So I, uh, I just withdrew. But so, you just yeah. so are you worried, concerned today, that there will also be a similar fraud, or there will be uh, rigging of ballots, stuffing of ballot boxes. Are you worried about that? Uh, these are uh, different times these days. Uh, and uh, mm, there are those concerns. Uh, at the same time, we are hopeful. We are hopeful that uh, uh, fraud could be prevented. But why, uh, why are these different what times? Uh, what, what I'm talking about is uh, uh, massive industrial scale fraud engineered uh, elections. That is something that cannot be repeated uh, and will not, uh, if repeated, will not result to the same outcome. Okay. Uh, and uh, why I am saying these are different times, mm, because people are, uh, are making more conscious mm -hmm. decisions okay. these, these times, uh, these days, and uh, they are more aware of their rights. Uh, they are more enthusiastic. Uh, and uh, uh, nobody should be under any illusion mm -hmm. that massive fraud takes place mm -hmm. and the result, the outcome will be based on that. Uh, the outcome will be decided by the people this time around. So if there is, first of all, so you're saying that the people themselves will <coughs> not allow the kind of fraud 
that you allege took place last time around? I, I, I'm, say, I'm saying that uh, the people are more aware and they can do that. Okay. And they will do that. Okay. And also we have domestic observers like 20,000 uh, monitors but in no our own team. But, but no foreign observers? Uh, not that many. Is it because of the security situation? They've been worried. It's not that, that there are no foreign observers, but they they cannot uh, monitor it nationwide. Okay. Uh, they will be focused in the capital, provincial right. capitals, or in the capital itself. That's because of security reasons. Okay. So, in in the worst case scenario, suppose I were to play devil's advocate. In the worst case scenario, if this goes into a second round, and um, you know, and your name is not. Or suppose you, even if you are one of the top two, and in the second round, in the worst case scenario, if it doesn't emerge that that you are the the, the next president, will you accept that? Uh, we are talking about uh, a hypothetical situation. Absolutely, it is a hypothetical and, situation. And uh, the point is, uh, should should we understand that somebody else has the votes? Mm -hmm. rather than the numbers based on ballot stuffing or anything as such, that's okay. Uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, if the uh, massive fraud takes place, uh, regardless of who comes first or second, uh, that is not acceptable. Okay. And the outcome will not be acceptable. Okay, but then how do you make a differentiation between the, f the fact that, that there could be fraud uh, as, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we have at least 20,000 domestic observers okay. in our own team. But, th but, those are, but those will be partisan. They will be pro no, Dr. They, Abdullah. No, it's a, the, the, we, will, we, will not, uh, we will not listen to uh, any sympathizer uh, based on his emotions. Okay. At the, we will document mm -hmm. uh, fraud the same way that we had done it earlier. But today it's much easier to document it with more mobiles in the hands of the people sure. and better training of the domestic observers and uh, uh, what I'm talking about, real things happening. Okay, so before I take a break, Dr. Abdullah, who is your closest challenger, do you think? Uh, fraud. Okay, you're not, you don't think it's Ashraf Ghani, you don't think it's Almeida Rasul, you don't think it's any of the others? The Somebody might, uh, will become the second, will have the second numbers. Uh, I'm not denying that. Okay. Uh, but in terms of uh, uh, constituencies, in terms of uh, the people, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I said. I love your confidence, Dr. Abdullah, but I'm going to take a very quick break and we'll be back very soon. Please don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching a very special edition of Indian Standard Time. And I'm in conversation with Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, a formidable contender in Afghanistan's presidential election. Dr. Abdullah, before the break, we were talking about the election itself. But I wanted to ask you, in these days in the run-up to the election in Kabul, there have been a lot of terror attacks, bomb attacks, in the Syrian Hotel, uh, in elsewhere. Why do you think the Taliban is making, this, this, uh, making it clear that they will destabilize the election. What is the message? Uh, if election is successful, if it is, uh, if there is a credible elections, if if uh, millions of people participate, uh, that is uh, another message mm -hmm. uh, of rejection of Talibanization of the country. Okay. Uh, and Taliban will consider it as a defeat, a failure in their own part. So they they are trying their best in order to. Uh, in order to, uh, to, to damage the process as much as they can. Uh, and they are attacking uh, uh, election workers, the offices, uh, our own campaign managers have been attacked. Absolutely. Uh, and Some of your and team members have been killed. Team members have been, have been assassinated. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, very unfortunate, but this is a fact of life. And the only way to, to divide this uh, and to address this situation mm -hmm. is uh, massive participation of the people in rejection of it outright, in which is something that uh, I hope our people will be doing, in, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure they will be doing. But it's incredible the rallies that we have witnessed, such huge rallies in Kandahar, not only yours, but across the country over, over these last several days, or with several presidential candidates. 
Is that a message as well that the that people that, that the people will not tolerate any more violence and instability? <coughs> Uh, one day before my rally in uh, in Kunduz, eight people were assassinated, uh, killed by through a suicidal attack by the Taliban, and those were our uh, sympathizers. Okay, uh, they had participated in a Burskeshi mm -hmm. uh, game uh, game uh, ahead of our rally next mm -hmm. day. I see. Uh, and then there was a suicidal attack, and uh, my campaign manager skipped, mm -hmm. uh, but eight other people uh, died. And then I, I was thinking of cancelling that rally uh, next day. Mm -hmm. uh, the families uh, and friends of those uh, victims, they asked me to continue. I see. Because they said that they succeeded to kill uh, our beloved ones, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't succeed to kill our desire uh, to change the situation and to, uh, to have our destiny, to take our destiny into our hands through elections. So I did have a rally. And then thousands of people showed up wow. in the same province after, let's say, 14 hours from that suicidal attack. That's quite incredible. But tell me, over the last <coughs> 10, 11, 12 years, when Afghanistan has been emerging into this new country, as it were, but over the last five years, especially, Dr. Abdullah, would you say that the fight against the Taliban has been successful? Um, I would say that throughout, uh, there have been successes and failures mm -hmm. and uh, mistakes. Okay. Uh, what are the mistakes uh, that you that your country has made or that the government has made? In terms of a Taliban issue, it has domestic. There are domestic factors. There are regional factors. Okay. There are international ones. Domestically, uh, our government, our leadership was not able was not able to unify the country in its sense and deliver to the people. And uh, with delivering to the people, creating circumstances and environment where people are uh, supportive mm -hmm. of the government. Right. So there is a growing gap between the government and the people okay. because of bad governance, because of corruption, because of injustice. So that impacted the fight against the Taliban? Certainly it has some impact. I'm not saying that this is the sole factor. Mm -hmm. uh, I will come to the, uh, to the more important factors. And another one was that the indigenous forces were weakened mm -hmm. deliberately by the, by the government well, of Who Afghanistan. are the indigenous forces? I'll come to that. All right. uh, in, in 2003, 2004 and 2005, the, the, the threat perception was that Taliban are gone, mm -hmm. Al-Qaeda is not a threat anymore, okay. Mujahideen are a threat. Right. And then there was a DDR process which created a void, a vacuum, security vacuum, which Taliban filled that vacuum. Mm -hmm. And then next to that is the uh, uh, fact that uh, Pakistan played a double game uh, by, by harboring Taliban and then supporting them mm -hmm. uh, in, in those uh, crucial and critical times. Pakistan could have taken advantage of that moment in order to deal with this threat, which was a threat and will be a threat for themselves as well. This is the second one. Okay. And internationally, the fact that the United States went to Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, it affected Afghanistan adversely. So combination of all these factors. Okay, but I'm asking you, it has, do you believe that the government of President Karzai has not fought the Taliban as you think it should have? Uh, I think certain other mistakes also have been made. Okay. Uh, the message about the, the peace has been very confusing. Yes, uh, this is... Uh, uh, President this Karzai's message of peace towards the Taliban. The, towards the Taliban. From one side, the absolute majority of the people want peace. Yes. There is no doubt. So that's a good thing, isn't it? That's a good thing. But at the same time, you don't mix up this message. We want peace. Mm -hmm. We are united in asking for negotiations and talks, right. and genuine, right. serious negotiations. At the same time, we are defending the rights of our people. That part of the message is missing. But I think what, what he's saying is that you're trying to separate your his Afghan <coughs> brothers or your Afghan brothers people who are Afghan and perhaps are in the Taliban from the sanctuaries of terror that are that are in neighboring countries. Am I correct in that assessment? The, uh, whatever happens today, there is a suicidal attack in, uh, in the evening. There, there, is a, uh, there is a statement uh, from the uh, presidential palace, either blame the uh, United States or any other country for it in uh, calling the Taliban brothers. Uh, those victims, whose brothers and sisters are those victims of these attacks, 
uh, these, uh, vi this violence in the country. So we are not sending the right, the right signal as far as defending the rights of our people, preserving and maintaining the achievements of the Afghan people, the rights of our citizens. That part of the message is missing from, from, from the uh, President Karzai's messages. So you're saying that it's a mixed message and that he should be much more clear? Much more clear. Genuine desire for making peace, uh, determination and resolve, defending the rights of our people against those who are uh, who are who are who are making massacres in this country? Who are who are killing innocent people? Who want to to dismantle the system? At the same time, releasing criminals from the from the prisons, okay, uh, re releasing terrorists without the guarantee that they will not join the battlefield. It's not helping. Okay. It's not getting us. So it's a weak message. Okay, sending messages from the weak position. Okay. Dr. Abdullah, hold your thought and I'm going to take a very <coughs> quick break. Please don't go away. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. You're watching this very special edition of Indian Standard Time and I'm in conversation with Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, a formidable candidate in Afghanistan's presidential election. Dr. Abdullah, you, in your, one of your earlier comments you talked about how Pakistan and Pakistan's policy towards Afghanistan uh, could be one of the reasons for the instability inside Afghanistan. But do you think, and, and are you then saying that, that the Pakistan's establishment has continued to harbor terrorists, insurgents? But is, is that correct? Would I be correct in my they, assessment? Uh, they consider their own Taliban as a threat to their own security and stability. But I think they have not reached to the level of understanding that uh, considering our Taliban, mm -hmm. which are of the same brand, okay. as a threat either to their own security or to ours, which is a, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is a great uh, misreading of the situation. And uh, we believe, and it has been proved, that the stronger Afghani Taliban uh, are, the stronger will be Taliban, Pakistani Taliban. The, the Afghan Taliban is stronger than the Pakistan Taliban. No, I mean, if the Afghani Taliban are stronger, then yes. the uh, Pakistani Taliban will become even more stronger from what they are, because okay. they are because helping, they are helping, helping one other. They are, they are helping one another. So how come that one will help uh, a country's national security interest and another one could be uh, a threat to the national security interest? This is uh, where we don't think that we have not reached to that understanding. But do you think the Pakistan establishment is also involved in this? <coughs> yeah, th there are elements, certainly there are elements who are supportive of this uh, idea. But how does uh, the Pakistan government look at your candidature? They have been reaching out to you. In what, I what is reaching out? In the sense that they have been, they've been saying that Dr. Abdullah is an important presidential candidate and that they must make overtures because You've been seen, in a sense, as part of the, the old Northern Alliance of Ahmed Shah Massoud, a Tajik predominantly, a, uh, of a Tajik ethnicity, and I think the Pakistanis feel that, that they must reach out to, the, to leaders who are also non-Pashtun. Uh, they say that there is that understanding that they, they need to be in contact with, uh, uh, with uh, all the Afghans and they need to, there need to be an understanding of the realities of Afghanistan that there are certain uh, constituencies in the country which cannot be ignored, mm -hmm. they say that. Yes. Uh, but uh, even in that, there is a, there is a misunderstanding. Yeah, my, my, my ethnicity is being uh, um, misread once again. In what not, way? Uh, for example, uh, in this country, mm -hmm. perhaps elsewhere as well, okay. uh, your ethnicity is being uh, attributed towards your father. Mm -hmm. Where your father comes from, then you're, uh, you'll be considered as, mm -hmm. as from as that part of the country. So my father comes from Kandahar, mm -hmm. where I, I was uh, there yesterday, yes? yes? And my mother comes from Panjshir. And I'm an Afghan, and first and foremost, I consider myself uh, an Afghan in a, in a Muslim. Yes. Uh, and this is my identity. Uh, so even that, uh, not only the, the perception uh, is is uh, different, uh, uh, not only in Pakistan but elsewhere as well. But apart from that, 
I'm ta we are talking about the country. Sure. We are saying that harboring Taliban in their soil and letting them benefit uh, from their presence there or get support there does not help their interest, let alone ours. Ours is, of course, being threatened. Mm -hmm. uh, so regardless of their perception about different communities, different uh, political figures, uh, this is the main hurdle, this has been the main hurdle uh, in, uh, in relations between Afghanistan and Pakistan. But to come back to the, um, to the question of your ethnicity, you, you say, of course your father is from the south, he's from Kandahar, uh, and your, m your mother is from the Panjshir. But there is a perception here in Afghanistan and earlier that you are because perhaps of your association with Ahmed Shah Massoud, that you're, that you're really sort of more Tajik than Pashtun. Is yeah, that yeah. a fair perception? I, I have, a, I have, a, I have a, an association with the history of this country, Absolutely. which I'm proud of. It. Yes. Uh, the resistance against the Soviets and the resistance against the Taliban. And then when it came to the political uh, process in Afghanistan, the recent one, the post bonn agreement, uh, I was one of the main architects of the Bonn process. So I have these three uh, milestones uh, uh, yeah, in, the, uh, in my, in my uh, lifetime. This is one. And the, next to that, uh, there is a sort of elitist uh, idea here in Kabul. Oh, such person belongs to that constituency. He doesn't have support. Mm -hmm. So my rally is in the south, in the east, in Jalalabad from Jalalabad to Kandahar has been the biggest, the most energetic, uh, the, uh, and, uh, and the most effective ones, uh, and the most conscious participants in it. Uh, and uh, our votes will be nationwide. So p uh, this argument has suited okay. some people. Uh, and uh, while when it comes to the, to the, to the people themselves, to the genuine leaders in those parts of the country, people are, have gone beyond these thoughts. So and your, also your yeah. rallies have been bigger than Ashraf Ghani's? Absolutely. Uh, in Kandahar, watch it. It's, it's not, not only that it has been bigger, but it's been energetic. It's people have had participated there, been there with their presence, while in other rallies people have gathered. They are there, they are silent. They, they watch, they listen, they go. And bigger than Zalmay Rasul as well, who is the... Uh, absolutely, in Kandahar. Okay. In Kandahar, like, if you have time. Sure, a, a couple of minutes. Watch, no, I, I mean... Yeah, okay. Uh, in wa <laughs> watch those, uh, those, uh, those films, mm -hmm. those... Uh, those uh, but do you, think, do you think Zalmay Rasul, who is a former foreign minister um, in this government, do you think he's a pres he is <coughs> President Karzai's candidate? Absolutely, there is no doubt. So the influence of the president, although the president is saying that he is neutral in this election, which he, no. which he likely is. The uh, likely is is, is is a very sort of remote uh, judgment what do you of think? what is happening. No, it, he's supportive of uh, Zanmay Rasul, and he has the right to be supportive of a person. Uh, but uh, yes, if, if your followers ask them to support this person, but not nobody has the right to use the state institutions and state apparatus in favor of a candidate. Unfortunately, uh, there are lots of examples of such things happening. Okay, we are running out of time, Dr. Abdullah, but I do want to ask you about the bilateral security agreement with the United States. It has been very contentious in recent months between the Afghan government yeah. and the U.S. What is your position? It, it needs to be signed. Why? We Why is that? Uh, if we have not reached, uh, as a, uh, we have not reached a level of uh, our security institutions are not in a position at the moment uh, to sustain itself uh, in deal to be able to deal with the challenges which are ahead of us without support uh, from the United States and the international community as a whole. So we are in need of signing this. It's rather than uh, than somebody wishing something for uh, other reasons. It's because of the necessity. And financial assistance is to Afghanistan, and a lot more depends on uh, signing of that. Again. So if you become president, uh, the American troops will stay? Or would you yes. think that they should leave as many no, as no, possible? I think, I think they, sh they should stay uh, uh, in the numbers that is needed in order to, uh, to help 
our security uh, institutions uh, and help uh, with stabilization of the country. Okay, and just absolutely the last question on India. What do you think India should do? And how do you think this election will impact on relations with India? Uh, I think uh, um, India has been helping Afghanistan throughout in the past. Okay. Uh, in the past uh, few years, and also during the resistance against Taliban. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, don't disengage, uh, continue the good work uh, in uh, helping Afghanistan and helping uh, rehabilitation of Afghanistan and strengthening the political process here. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, thank you so much for talking to Rajya Sabah TV. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. We've been in conversation with Dr. Abdullah Abdullah. Next week we will have yet another global leader or thinker. Till then, goodbye and good luck.